In this session, we will study the capability curves of simple generator. The capability curve of a simple machine or a generator defines means in certain maximum limits or bounds within which it can operate safely. That is, we should not exceed the, the boundaries. What are these bonds in the case of the singular generator? Means the capability curve is within this particular limits, the singular machine operate safely. Oh, these are the, some of the, the limitations of the singular generator. One is MVL loading cannot exceed the generator generator rating. That is, one should not load the generator beyond its rating of the MVA of the, the generator. You should not exceed MVA rating of the, the generator within which you are operating a single generator. The second thing is that megawatt loading cannot exceed the, the turbine rating which is given by the MVA rating multiplied by power factor. That is one thing is you should not exceed the volt ampere or MVA rating of the generator. The second thing is that the megawatt output of a generator that is given by MVA to power factor that should not be exceeded the turbine rating which is driving the, the generator so that there should not be overloading. Therefore, one is you should not exceed the rating of the MVA loading and MVA loading a megawatt loading cannot be exceeded the turbine rating turbine rating that is given by the MVA output of a alternator multiplied by the, the power factor. The third one is the generator must operate a safe margin away from steady state stability limit means you should not exceed the load angle more than 90 degree within which you have to operate the generator you have to load whenever there is a loading there is an increase in the load angle you should not exceed the load angle beyond delta is equal to 90 degree within that the generator will operate safely. This can be let down as a maximum allowable value of the delta that is the less than delta is equal to 90 degree. And the other thing is that the maximum field current cannot exceed specified value imposed by the rotor rating. That is another condition you have to look into is that is you should not exceed the field current field current to its rated value that is specified only the machine. Then to draw the capability curve of a single generator, first we have to go for the, the phasor diagram of the alternator. Then we have to move for the capability curves. Then from the this uh, vector diagram of the alternator, we are getting the, the capability curve. That is, we know that V is the terminal voltage. Then I am considering here lagging the current which is delivering the lagging current I with a angle phi that is a power factor angle is phi. Then I am neglecting here the armature resistance then I am adding directly the I A axis drop to V so that I am getting the, the generated voltage E that is I A axis it should be perpendicular to I A that is perpendicular to I A so that what I am getting is E. Then the angle between the terminal voltage and the generated voltage what we are calling is the load angle for it, the torque angle. Okay. With this the vector diagram just we have to develop the, the capability, capability curves. Once again I am drawing the same the vector diagram with the terminal voltage V and current I is lagging an angle of phi with the terminal voltage V and adding I axis which is perpendicular to I so that I am getting E then the angle between V and E is the delta. Then for this vector diagram what I am doing is I am multiplying 3V time 3V by Xs to all the, the phases. I am multiplying 3V by Xs to this voltage time. Then what I am getting here? That is this original the vector diagram V, I, Xs and E. Then for each vector, what I am multiplying is 3V by Xs. Okay. Multiplied by 3V by Xs. Here also 3V by Xs. It is 3V by Xs. Then what we are what getting here? It is 3 times 
v square by x s. Here what you are getting x s k x s get cancelled. You are getting 3 times p x s. Here what we are getting is 3 times e b by x s. Okay, these are the, the value of the vectors we are getting by multiplying 3 b by x s. Therefore, it is 3 b square by x s. What I am getting here is 3 times v x s. Here it is 3 times v by x s. This is we are multiplying the 3 v by x s to all the phases so that I am getting this particular triangle. If you are looking to this particular vector that is 3 v i that is 3 times v i that is it is a volt ampere output of a generator. 3 times v i is it is the volt ampere output of a generator. Then I want to bifurcate active and reactive power from the apparent power of 3 times v i a. That is I have to get the, the x component and the y component 3, v, 3 times v i a so that I am getting the active power and reactive power which is delivered by the, the alternator. Therefore, I am constructing here, I am marking this as O dash O and this is I am taking this the power axis and it is a reactive power. So that I am resolving this along the OQ and OP. What I am getting here? See here, my identity of this, this is phi. Then if you are dropping here, we are getting this phi. That ultimately this angle is also we are getting phi. Just I am showing here. That is, this is phi and this is also angle the phi. Now, if you look into the triangle O, O n, the O n, that is, this is phi. Okay, you have to apply the cos function here. Cos phi is equal to opposite side divided by hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 3 times V A I S and we are applying the cos. Therefore, the O n, what I am getting here is, that is 3 times V I A into cos, sorry, sin phi. It is opposite side divided by hypotenuse. This is opposite side divided by hypotenuse. Sorry. You have to go for this as a sin function. Sin is opposite divided by hypotenuse. Therefore, this is your Q component. That is the reactive component of 3 times V i a. That is 3 V i a sin phi. Then if you are applying the cos function here, it is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. So that the n m what I am getting is 3 times V i a cos phi. Means the 3 V i a is resolved into its active power and a reactive power. This is the, the power output of an alternator whereas this is the reactive power output of a generator. Okay. Now, in the triangle OMN, that is same thing I have written here, it is OMN is the complex power triangle in the three phase values because I have multiplied here all the vectors of the voltage with 3V by XS so that OMN is the complex power triangle in a three phase value. Then OM the word OM is the S yes, that is a megavolt ampere of the, the alternator and NM that is NM is the, the active power that is in terms of megawatt whereas OM is a reactive power that is QMVAR. Therefore, I am resolving that is the apparent power into the active power and the reactive power. Now I am drawing here the capability curves step by step. Once I am taking the same the vector diagram here, that is O dash, O, N and M. O N is the reactive component of 3 times V A I A and this is active component of the power or output of a alternator. It is a reactive power output. It is an apparent power output. We will go by the point one by one. The constant S operation will lie on a circle centered at O and radius of O. Just you have to analyze this. That is, 
we know that the om is the the apparent power that is s you are representing by that as a s it is 3 times va into i that is apparent power then the constant the power output in terms of mva will get with the a circle which is at the center at o and the radius of om that is if you are drawing circle just i am constructing that is p and q as it is in the the previous case then the constant uh, s operation will get as a radius of om and centered at o so that what i am getting here is this is all that is if you are operating the alternator under constant mva output then that points are lie on this particular the locus means we will get the constant mva operating cash tax you are getting on this axis when with the radius of om now the second point is the constant p operation will lie on line parallel to o dash q this is o dash q that is we know that this apparent power can be the resolved along x and y axis q and p axis then the constant the power operation which will lie on a line parallel to o dash q that is this is the maximum limit of your the mva that is i will come back to this once again that is it is a constant s operation then the maximum limit of s can be extended here the second part the constant power operation will lie on the line parallel to which is o dash q therefore it is a maximum operating power output of a the alternator what i am getting here then the constant excitation e operation will lie on the circle centered at o dash of radius o that is we know that if you are uh, taking out 3 vv by x what we are getting this is v this i axis it is e vector that is a previous previous one that is this is v i axis and it is z uh, it is e then the e is it is o dash f in the uh, the voltage vector diagram voltage vector diagram therefore the constant excitation e operation will lie on a circle centered at o dash and radius of o that is quite evident because it is a e then the constant excitation operation what i am getting is along this curve this along this curve and the maximum operation of with the maximum field current that i can extend this curve to this point this point then the third one is the constant power factor operation will lie on the radial length through o radial length through o that is if this is a lagging power factor that is the leading power then now with the specified upper limits of s p and e that is we have specified the upper limits because if you are going into the the minimum value of the power this is the maximum value of the power this curve is maximum maximum the mva rating of a alternator it is a maximum that is the emf the maximum all the three conditions i mentioned here this is a maximum power curve this is a maximum s curve this is a maximum e curve then you have to specify maximum delta maximum delta that is the limit on the left side is specified by delta max that is what i it is represented as delta max so that this curve is corresponding to maximum power output within which the generator should operate for megawatt output this is for mva maximum mva it is within this it has to operate and it is e max means maximum the excitation in which in this boundary it has to work therefore this particular curve is called as 
the capability curve of the alternator within which the alternator alternator has to be operated for safe operation or stable operation.